appearances in the Australia Cup. And the number 19, Giuseppe, or Joe Tilio, the older brother of Marco Tilio, formerly of Melbourne City, and now with Celtic. There is Sulav Maski, one of three survivors from Hellenic's last appearance in the round of 32. Former Nepal under-19 captain scored a double against the Western Sydney Wanderers in a very hard-fought 4-3 loss, the second of which was voted goal of the tournament for 2018. Very good crowd building up here. The Darwin Football Stadium, a lovely sun set in the background as well. And there's Lion striker Ollie Green, club's top scorer of the season with eight in New South Wales League One. He's one who's also made it as far as the round of 16 in the Australia Cup with Hakoa Sydney City East in 2017. On, Here is Hellenic coach Demi Galanopoulos. Getting his side pumped, put out the call to the local Darwin community to get him behind the club. Creative services manager at a printing company in Darwin. Very excited for what's in store tonight. There is John Theodoropoulos, 42 years old, former player with Canterbury Marrickville, Dulwich Hill and Stanmore Hawks, as well as a long-time coach with the Hawks. Alex King, the man with the whistle tonight, will be assisted by Helming Lee and Tim Lay, fourth official Nasir Juman. Beautiful night for football. Here in the top end. I mentioned that no team from the Northern Territory has made it past the round of 32. Closest of which being Hellenic back in 2018, that 4-3 loss to the Wanderers. In recent times we've seen some very lopsided scores. But Hellenic are absolutely flying in the North Zone Premier League. This presents probably the best chance to make it into the round of 16 for the first time and grab a piece of history for themselves. Both teams in their huddles, final words of encouragement. Both sides certainly know what's at stake tonight. Big night for Inter Lions as well. First time in the Cup. And certainly making a night of it. Their home ground, Majors Bay. Putting on a, a big screen for about 100, 150 players, coaches and parents. So I hope you enjoy this one tonight. All set to go here in Darwin. Match day three, the Australia Cup round of 32. It will be Hellenic to get things underway in their all black kit. Certainly be interesting to see how this one plays out. Certainly hard to gauge the level of football in the North Zone Premier League compared to League One. The best team in the Northern Territory. This is a team that's the upper end of the middle part of the table in League One. Yeah, that's right, Robbie. It certainly is. And I think the other ingredient to throw in the, the mix is it's cup football, it's televised. It's a big moment for these players. So sometimes form goes out the window, adrenaline kicks in, big stage, opportunity knocks. Can do wonderful things for performances. Obviously nodded forward by Fikret Berisha. It's easily dealt with by Hellenic backline. Kane McAdam, fairly touch. Under a little bit of pressure. A little bit unlucky there. First touch just bouncing into the hand. So free kick to Hellenic.
And no doubt the pressure is a little bit more on Hellenic Athletic as the home side, of course. They didn't have the travel involved that Inter had. Although I do know when the draw came out, Inter Lions were very, very happy. They certainly enjoyed it. Look at that sunset behind the grandstand, Robbie. Absolutely spectacular. Captured by our cameras. Is it red sky at night? Sailor's delight or something along those lines? I'm going to break out singing soon, Robbie. <laughs> I'm not bad at karaoke, Mossy. But anyway, back to the football. Anthony Costa. Mentioned up the top. Experience at this level. As the Lions work their way forward. Here's Duke. For Evan Patramanis. Anthony Costa mentioned Georgievsky off the bench. They faced each other back in 2016 with Costa at Balmain and Georgievsky playing for Melbourne Victory. Found a great photo of Daniel Georgievsky attempting a bicycle kick. And it looked like it basically came off his toe. <laughs> <laughs> of course. DG, one of our colleagues here at 10. A bit disappointed he's not starting tonight. No doubt he'll come off the bench and have an impact at some point. Here's McNabb. Finds its way forward for Bell. Gets the head up. Looking for the return pass. Had the right idea. Well, I have to say, if Simon Bell's the oldest player on the pitch, he certainly doesn't look it physically. Looks to keep himself in very good nick. Ripe old age of 39, I think I heard you say, Robbie. Stephen Anaceris. To take the throw in for Inter. I mean, there's just an indication of just how dewy it is. Humidity is at about 50%, but certainly going to play a factor. Judging by the throw-ins, cross to the back post. Nearly chance there for Owen Duke. And that's come off a defender, so it'll be a corner, well, says you, Alex King. You can call it the moisture on the ball. I'm going to call it the bloopers reel. That is one for the highlights. Lachlan Everett to take the corner. In swinger with the right boot. Most of the near post looking for the flick on. Ejeki, I don't think knew too much about that. Managed to get it clear. Ball back in. Wanted away by Billy Patraman. Oh, excuse me. Savas Chakoilis. Chance to on for enter. Launched forward from halfway. The flick on, not it over the top. Question of offside, but Inter Alliance reel away in celebration. We have the first goal of the night, courtesy of Owen Duke. Well, it's a fantastic finish, isn't it? Great awareness. Quite a simple ball played long and through the middle. Great flick on, there's the long ball. And a super touch into the path of Owen Duke and there's another Duke who wears a Socceroo jersey who knows his way to goal and this one Owen Duke has shown that he's just a, just as capable in front of goal to give his side a 1-0 lead just the faintest of touches over the top of the defense and I think it might have been Anthony oh, excuse me Cristiano da Costa who was keeping Duke on side that is a very nice touch and the league one side take the lead Goal to nil after six minutes here in Darwin. Well, Hellenic coach Dimi Galanopoulos will be absolutely filthy with the ease with which Inter sliced his team apart there. 
It's quite a simple long ball to the edge of the area. Fantastic flick on into the path of Owen Duke. And that is really good awareness from Duke. Just to use the pace of the ball to lift it over the out, the oncoming goalkeeper. And Kane McAdam. Seven goals this season in League One for Owen Duke. Scored on the weekend against the Blacktown Spartans. Also had a goal in the Australia Cup preliminary rounds. It's Bonnie Rigg in round five. Another chance here potentially for Lions off the throw. The flick on again at the near post. Only half cleared. Barish has done well there. Scrambling to get on the end of that. Another corner for Inter. He's done very well, Barisha. He showed some real toe in that little foot race inside the 18-yard box. He was probably second favourite to get there. And then he makes something out of nothing. Gives his side a corner. This time to be taken by Ben Morrison, the left back. Another end swinger. Deep delivery to the back post. Not convincing with the header, lifted back into the penalty spot. Bit of chaos ball. And the foul eventually given. Nervous start for the home side tonight. Again, on the flip side of that, a very good start by Inter. We talked about the trip they've had to make. And they've certainly showed no signs of heavy legs in these early exchanges. We just see the foul again. A little push in the back. Alex King too experienced with the whistle to let that one slide. Yeah, the interlines decided to travel up a day earlier just to help get them acclimatised. That certainly will hopefully pay dividends towards the latter stages of the game as well. Certainly tough conditions to play in. Do you have any, have any experience up in Darwin? Once I made a trip to Darwin with uh, football. I think it was a pre-season game. And it is, you do, you do have to, I mean, you can't acclimatise in one day, but certainly just getting used to the surroundings, getting used to breathing, the warmer air, the increased humidity. You know, from memory, it was quite a dry hit the time of year we were there, but nevertheless, these players will be absolutely loving the challenge and the trip. What a tackle that was. Win possession for Inter. And Ollie Green nearly getting on the end of the pass. Alex King, referee, was right there. Said it was a clean tackle. Here it is here, screen in screen. No quarter asked, no quarter given. It's cup football. You can see the home side. Hellenic sitting in that deeper block, defensive block, willing into Lions into their trap before they start to press them at some point and it's obviously a bit too early if that's their tactic to defend a bit deeper it's too early to start pressing too high and opening the pitch up but certainly they're going to have to find ways to put pressure on the ball to try and get themselves back into this game and Selenic work their way forward looking for Bell those 38 year old legs nearly got there smart through ball Nicholas Stefanodakis nearly laid it on a dime for Bell. Tell you what, is that barbecue on fire in the background or is that just beautiful smoke? <laughs> Only at the cup. As the sirens go off in the background as well. Here's another look at that pass. It was almost pinpoint, wasn't it? Really good vision to play Bell in. Sharp work by Costa as well. Meantime, Barisha for Inter. 
And Jacket comes across. Here is Bell. Combining with McNabb. And Bell and McNabb, the two top goal scorers in the Premier League. McNabb was a golden boot across the league last season. Also had a stint as the Premier League reserves coach last season as well. Throw in here for the home side. Tricoilis. Flick on from Maskey. Dealt with. Armson. Launching it forward. Brought under control very nicely. Still could be on here for Inter. Here's Barisha in space. Looks up, has a go! And McAdam luckily got something behind that. That was swerving. Well, he did well there, McAdam, just to get something behind it to push it over. Well, we've already seen a goal from Duke, who's got a namesake in the Socceroos, who knows how to score. Now we've got a Barisha striking the ball from outside the box. That had some real venom on it. I saw the reaction there. And, of course, Barisha's namesake, of course, knew his way to goal as well in the A-League. Third corner of the night for Inter Lions. It'll be another in swinger. It's caused a few problems early stages. McAdam with the one arm punch. Nodded back over the top by Becerra. Stays in the field of play. And McAdam up strongly, but it's found its way to the back of the net. But Alex King has awarded the free kick. Yeah, it always looked like a foul for mine. Just a little bit too much force. As Alex King just tells Billy Patramanis to pull his head in a little bit. Must have said something on the way past the experienced A-League referee. Always interesting, those ones. The argument, keepers are a protected species. We'll have another look at it. Well, they do well to fashion this chance because they just didn't give it up. And then we see the ball flick into the air. Gee, Robbie, you may, 50 have, 50. A, you may have a point there. At first glance, I thought it was a definite foul, but Barisha may have an argument that it was a fair goal. In time, here's Stefano Darkus looking forward, looking to try and combine with his front men. Again, into defence, step up. Here's Barisha, who's been lively in this first half. It's a good little battle brewing between he and Christian Da Costa. Battle of different weight divisions there. It certainly is. That'll be one to keep an eye on tonight. Barisha looks very, very willing. He's got a powerful running style, very positive and direct. Da Costa will have his work cut out, no doubt. Look at this. He's looking around for support, but then he thought, no, I can get there myself and get something out of this. It does exceptionally well. Pushed again by McAdam, who's looked a little shaky under the high ball. And that's no doubt something that the inter side would have latched onto after this opening quarter of an hour. Is Sam Armson into lines captain. Crunching tackle. And then home side have won the throw in. Well, that's a really good tackle. Really well timed. It's Kimon Tomazos 
to Marzos. He waited his time. He stayed on his feet until he knew he could win that ball cleanly. Timed it perfectly. Lone skipper, Armson, got a bit of his own back there. Brother Jack played for Apia Leichhardt last night. Good win for the Tigers. And also has a younger brother, Ned, playing in the under-20s for the Interlions. So, family with a lot of pedigree, the Armsons. Becerra, cross for Evan Patramanis. Eventually look forward for the goal, score, goal scorer, Duke. Neat little interplay down this left-hand side. Chance brewing. Cut back to the edge of the box. It's the right ball there. They couldn't find it. And Sam Armson free as a bird on the edge of the box. A good start by Inter, though. They've looked very comfortable in possession. They've had the lion's share. If you'll pardon the pun. And they've used it quite well. I see what you did there. Morrison launching into the box. As Barisha shot on the turn. Eventually dealt with by Kane McAdam. Here's Da Costa. Chance to run. A little bit awkward. It did the job. Oliver Green with the tackle. Launches a counter attack for the Lions. Cross to the back post. And a jack air needed to get the touch in. Good opportunity for Owen Duke in the Inter Lions. Or was it Tracoilus who tracked his runner? This is fantastic from Inter. It's Tracoilus who tracked his runner, stuck yeah. to the task and defended the situation very well. Well spotted. A good overlapping run from Steve Avicenaris, the right fullback for Inter Lions. And great delivery. Yet another corner for the visiting side and free as a bird at the back post cleared off the line appeals to the assistant referee flag stays down no goal we play on and that was very close well da costa to the rescue off the line held his position well but the question marks will be over the free header at the back post barisha armson and cleared by a jacket They just need something up the other end. Hellenic Athletic just to bring this crowd to life. They've got a good following here tonight. Everett, early ball in. Finds its way to Green on the edge of the box. Laying it off for Duke! Make mine a double, please, says Owen Duke. And Inter Lions double their lead. Hellenic Athletic all at sea here in Darwin. And it is the League One side up 2-0. Well, it's a wonderfully crafted goal created by that man on the edge of the box, Oliver Green. He just waited his time to lay the ball into Owen Duke. And by the way, that finish was absolutely clinical. He knew exactly where he was going to tuck that ball into the back of Kane McAdams' net. It bounced at an awkward length for the goalkeeper. But look at this. The timing of the run, and then he really gives that some with the inside of his foot. But it was an awkward bounce just in front of McAdam. But some great vision of Duke for his second goal of this evening. Yeah, the pitch is quite patchy in the goal areas and just on the edge of the centre circle. Always tough to deal with as a goalkeeper. Unfortunately for Kane McAdam. That one found its way into the back of the net.
The bounce was unfortunate for McAdam. There's no doubt about that. But the way Duke opened his body and got the power behind what essentially was a pass. It's not like he put his laces through the ball. He opened himself up. He got some real power behind what was a very good finish. Here's Barisha. Neat touch from Everett. And it'll go behind for another corner. It's been a tough period for Hellenic so far in this first half. Just desperately need to get a bit of possession. Just any kind of time on the ball. Yeah, that's right. And it's those two that we just saw in picture who are causing all sorts of problems. Owen Duke in the number seven. And Barisha in the number 11. They've started this game oh so well for their side. Here's Morrison from the corner to the back post. And Bell will have a second crack at clearing his lines. He's able to find Stefano Darkus. Continues his run forward. And that's well done by Hellenic. Battling hard in midfield. Maskey gets the head up. Looks to release McNabb. No foul on Athanasaris or referee Alex King playing advantage. Just to your point earlier, Robbie, and you're spot on. Hellenic just needs some possession for a sustained period. They just can't keep the ball. You've got to give some credit to Inter Lions the way they're pressing. As we just see that foul, Alex King looking for the advantage. There wasn't one. So he pulled it back. Of course, two other games in action tonight. Match day three, Australia Cup round of 32. Just hit half time, Morton Bay against Heidelberg. Also, Melbourne Knights taking on the Queensland Lions. So, hopefully, you've got your screens out, keeping an eye on all the games. Christian De Costa. Maskey. George Carpathios. A long diagonal ball. Armson for Inter. Looks to release Barisha, who's swapped wings. Turned over again inside their own half. Green looks up. And another awkward shot for McAdam to deal with. And you can see the frustration there. Puts his hand up in apology. And there's not much you can do with the ball dipping and landing in that rough patch right in front of him. Yeah, that's right. He should have been more disappointed with his midfield than his own efforts there. McAdam, because they're the ones that gave the ball away cheaply in midfield. And created that opening for Inter, which could well have ended up in the back of his net once again. Hellenic really need to start moving that ball from side to side with more ball speed. A little bit too slow. Morrison again to the back post. It was done well by Barisha, I think it was, to keep it in the field of play, but McAdam looking a little more assured on that occasion. But the pressure is still on. Morrison stayed forward. See that 11 touches in the opposition penalty area. And 
Billy Petromanis. You can see Maskey going to press then, willing his midfield to come with him. There's no point going and pressing one out unless the midfield's connected to you. Mentioned Maskey, Cup Hero in 2018 for this Hellenic side. He's only managed six games this season in the Premier League. Still working his way back from a quite a serious back injury. And from the few touches he's had tonight, you do see just that little bit of class shining through. Hopefully we can see more of him as this match unfolds. Here's this goal again. That's brilliantly done by Oliver Green. He didn't panic. He just waited to commit the defender. And once the defender was committed, he rolled Duke in. He finished it quite brilliantly. Not clear by De Costa. Thanaceris finds Barisha, heads to the byline, gets a cross in to a dangerous position. Just took an awkward touch off Green, otherwise Duke may have been in for his third. Counter-attack possibilities here for Lenick. De Costa, Anthony Costa, excuse me, races out of his goal, gets there first. Good example of... A sweeper-keeper doing his job there, Anthony Costa. Communication and timing had to be spot on, and it was. There's plenty of football to come on 10 play. We'll keep an eye out for... The Russian Saudi League kicking off this weekend, Saturday the 12th. Get to see Cristiano Ronaldo and a whole bunch of stars playing in the Saudi League. Three games every weekend, exclusive on 10 plate. First matchup, El Akhli against Al Hazem. Saturday morning, 3.45 Eastern time. Ball stolen back by Inter. Duke. Barisha. Cross takes the deflection and McAdam gets there. Nicholas Stefanodakis. Chakoilis. McNabb. Building quite nicely here. Overlapping run coming from George Carpathios. This may be the first time they've made it this far down the field, Hellenic. Maskey, first time ball in. You're almost right. It was the second time after that through ball early, Robbie, where Simon Bell couldn't quite get there, but to your point, they've got to start to threaten more when they're in possession. The home side because the visitors are looking very, very comfortable. Maybe just saw a little bit of it there rather than playing those first time passes, just taking an extra touch in midfield, looking for a better option. Sign of life for the home side. Morrison with the cross, meantime, for Inter. Comes off a jacket for another corner. There's a the possession. 60% to 39 or 40% if you like. A bit surprised by that. I thought Inter had had more than 60%. That's what they've done with it that counts. And that is those numbers above with eight corners to nil in favour of the visitors. Very dominant performance in the first half an hour. Here's that corner. That's a better punch from McAdam to the edge of the box. Armson. Stefanodakis got a toe in. Long range shot coming. 
It's not a bad effort. This one just wide. Stephen Athanasaris. Probably not a bad time to have a crack when you're two up. Yeah, he probably won't get too much stick from his teammates, but there are some other options on, and I'm sure that G John Theodoropoulos will be wanting that third goal before the break. So McNabb tries that switch on the volley. And the Knicks still have possession. Here's Maskey. Brings De Costa into play. Now Turner. Carpathios. This is where their starting positions are so crucial. They need to get their shape here. Helene can start asking questions of Inter with their starting positions and start to take players out of the game with some penetrating passes. You can see no options from the back. Which will probably force them to go long at some point. Duke comes away with it. And Jekka has a little bit of support and they get the throw in. Maskey gets the head up. Inter will come away with the throw. Morrison. Comes back for Billy Patramanis. Evan Patramanis. Duke drops the shoulder. As a second go, gets past his man to the byline. Can he find support? It's there at the back post in the shape of Barisha. He's claiming it took a touch off the defender. And it looks like he's won the argument. Yeah, I thought he had a fair argument too. So did Alex King. But look at this from Duke down the left-hand side. Some brilliant wing play there. And then he picks his pass. That's a really intelligent dispatch of the ball to his strike partner in Barisha. He's just looking for his half a yard to get his strike away. But well defended. Is Ben Morrison to the back post. And they have found another opportunity. The defender didn't go with Alex Becerra, I think it was. Yeah, I think you're spot on. And once again, it's a free far post header. With some investigations at half time, no doubt. Stefano Darkus in a bit of space. McNabb just arced his run nicely just not able to get on the end of the pass again right idea just execution that last pass not quite on point yeah i have to say in a well beaten side in this first half stefano darkus has showed some beautiful little touches just the weight of the pass has been slightly off everett to the top of the circle green 
Everett has a pop. Duke crosses into the top of the box. Eventually half cleared by Turner. Athanasaris strides forward. End result, another corner. Not for the first time we've seen Steve Athanasaris inject himself into the play down this right-hand side. Very intelligently. Didn't get to deliver that time as he was well defended. Look at these 10 corners to zero in favour of the visitors. That occasion, Kimon Tomazis doing his defensive work for his side. Actually, I think it was Alex Turner, I beg your pardon. Morrison again. McAdam comes, gets a fist on it. Only half cleared by Bell. Edge of the box. And Jackie gets in the way. Ball back in. Dangerous era. area. And the Hellenic captain tidies up and wins the foul. Becerra, the defender, has found himself in advanced areas a few times tonight, and he's certainly causing plenty of problems. You see that little foul that just relieved the pressure. Screen in screen. Quite remarkable. Robbie, we're up to double figures in corners, and it's all to one side, and that's a visitor's. 38 minutes gone. Barisha, early cross. Was able to find Duke, but couldn't connect with Oliver Green. And Carpathios finds Maskey. Jacoilis. Forced all the way back to McAdam. And that's tricky. The back pass just in that lumpy part of the pitch. He's, having a, he's not having a great first half, unfortunately, Kane McAdam. I can only imagine what that goal mouth feels like to McAdam. Not for the first time we've seen the ball bobble very dangerously in front of him. Usually it's in front of his hands, that time in front of his feet. Morrison. Finds Duke, the flick on. Eventually cleared. Well, again, from a long throw like that, you cannot allow a player to receive the ball at their feet inside your own penalty box. You've got to have someone in front and behind. It's just organisation, 101. Everett, cross to the edge of the box. Chance for a hat-trick for Duke! Touched in! Flag stays down. And it's the big number nine, Oliver Green, who gets into Lions third on the night to cap off a dominant first half display here in Darwin. Well, his first half performance has warranted a goal, Ollie Green. And now he's got it. The question is, has he taken a hat trick off Duke? Oh, I think that's a good finish. Oh, I think that's a good finish from Ollie Green. I think he had no choice but to stick his foot out and make sure that hit the back of the net. But again, Duke causing all sorts of problems down that left-hand side. We saw five goals scored last night by Lockie Brook for Western Sydney Wanderers. Are we going to see a similar tally tonight? Because I can tell you, Owen Duke looks in the mood, even though he didn't get his name on the score sheet then. Eight goals this season in League One. Scored a hat-trick against Rydalmere at the start of the season back in February. Gets on the score sheet tonight. Go along with his assist for the second goal.
Here's Turner. Bell just not able to keep control. His full qualifying campaign for Inter Lions. Started back in round three against Kissing Point, 7-1 winners. And then went on to beat Norwest and Bonnie Rig White Eagles, Wollongong Olympic. And one of the biggest upsets of the season against Rockdale Illenden in that final round to make it through to the round of 32. That's a huge upset, isn't it? Knocking Rockdale Illenden out in Pure One, of course. The big club. Club with a lot of history in the MPL. Just the two goals conceded in their qualifying campaign. Cadam claims that. Oh, he'll be relieved it didn't bounce. <laughs> Once he could finally take one on the full, take the pitch out of the equation. Stefano Darkus for Hellenic finds Maskey. Very much shades of Uli Davila in the all black kit, just in stature, the haircut. Referee waves play on meantime. Early chance from distance, hits the crossbar. That would have been a spectacular goal. Chance still on for Inter. Barisha. Everett, back post again. Oh, and McAdam. Well, what have we just witnessed there? Wow. That is some strike. That would have been a contender for the best Australia Cup goal ever scored. Kane McAdam was scrambling. Just trying to work out who was behind that strike. That was some effort. The referee brings a halt to proceedings. What an attempt on target. Lachlan Everett. Yeah, I think it was Robbie. Great effort as Hellenic looks to have made a substitution here. Billy Patramanis, or excuse me, the number two for Hellenic Savas Tricoilis comes off for Robert Kilmartin. Also played back in the 2018 Cup against the Wanderers. A little bit of experience brought on the field for the home side. Danaceris with the cross, dealt with by Carpathios, edge of the box, Everett dancing his way through. Half a shout for a penalty, referee waves play on, and Danaceris again. And eventually, Hellenic well, can try and gain some control, but it's been turned over. Ollie Green parried away, only into the path of the Interlines captain, Sam Armson, makes it 4-0 inside the first half for the Interlions. Well, gee, that man there is having a rough night in goal, isn't he? Kane McAdam, he couldn't hold the first shot. Again, some really enterprising play from Interlions. And Captain Armson is Johnny on the spot to tuck away the rebound to give his side now what you'd imagine is an unassailable lead before we even go into half time it is shaping as a long long night in that second half for Hellenic Athletic and nothing less than Inter Lions deserve you have to say Sam Armson two goals in the league this season two goals in the qualifying run as well So that makes it three consecutive cup matches that Sam Armson has scored for Interlions against Wollongong Olympic in round six, against Rockdale Lillenden in that massive upset in round seven, and then tonight in the round of 32.
Meantime, here's Kilmartin. His first touch is a wayward pass. Just see the frustration in the Hellenic players. They're working hard, but it's just not connecting. Yeah, they just can't keep that sustained possession, can they? But that substitution of Kilmartin's forced a bit of a shuffle. He's playing in midfield, and De Costa's gone to right back, with Tumanis dropping out the left fullback. What a half by the League One side from New South Wales into Lions FC. A dominant display here in the top end. And it's nothing short of what they deserve. A double to Owen Duke. Ollie Green and Sam Armson getting in on the act as well. Halftime here in Darwin. Into Lions 4 lead the home side Hellenic Athletic nil. We take a look at the highlights. It all started in the sixth minute with Owen Duke getting the first of his two. Yeah, he's been prolific in this first half hasn't he not just the two goals that he scored but what he's done in general play as well great little touchdown by ollie green again he's been the creator supreme with two assists tonight but they really have dominated in every department and here's ollie green again with his second assist look at that timing he's waited for the run of duke he's waited for the defender to commit and then duke has unleashed with a fantastic strike with the inside of his foot look at that calm as a cucumber Opens his body out and too much pace for McAdam in the goal. And Ollie Green got himself on the score sheet. May have taken a hat trick off Owen Duke, but the touch probably was needed, he'll argue for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, he'd be sitting on the bench next week if it didn't go in and he didn't stick his foot out. So, like all good strikers, they're on the spot when it counts. And here's the last goal. Again, McAdam just couldn't hold the ball and captain. Sam Armson, Johnny on the spot to tuck away his first of the evening. It certainly hasn't been a night to remember for Kane McAdam. And here's that attempt just before half time from distance. Lachlan Everett, millimetres away from one of the goals of the tournament. I'd say goals of the cup ever. That would have been right up there in the highlights reel, if not the best goal. And certainly in the grand final, remarkable strike on this pitch as well from halfway. Well, if there was an award for goals that never were, I think that might be up there as we take a look at the stats. And you, you mentioned surprise at that possession count because it does certainly feel like it's been more than 60% in favour of the Interlions. That's right. But if you look at the expected goals, 1.44, they're well ahead of that. Shots, 13-0. to zero. Corners, 10-0. Uh, final third passes, 71-24. to 24. Just remarkable. It's been a very, very dominant performance. Well, stick around. There's plenty more action to come in the second half here in Darwin. But as we head to the break, it is the visitors from League One New South Wales into Lions who take a 4-0 lead. We'll be back with all the second half action after the short break.
Welcome back to the top end. Darwin Football Stadium. This round of 32 Australia Cup clash. Hellenic Athletic with a little bit of work to do, fair to say, in this second half. They find themselves down by four goals to nil against the Interlions from New South Wales League One. Robbie Feldman and Phil Moss bringing you all the action from the Territory tonight. Hope you're enjoying your Thursday night football, wherever you are tuning in on 10 play. Mossy, a four goal lead, not insurmountable, but it is approaching Mount Everest. What does Hellenic need to do to turn things around? Two things, put more pressure on the ball and keep possession much, much better than what they did in that first half as we see a substitution with Solomon Bell departing for the home side. And Stilianos Vrontos coming on for Hel Hellenic Athletic. 20-year-old forward, so it'll be a like-for-like -like substitution. Three goals this season in the North Zone Premier League. Also scored in the NT Cup final, which was the final round of cup qualification. 3-1 win over Verdi FC. He got one goal himself. All set to go here in the second half. Inter Lions with one foot in the door to the round of 16. Gee, what a run that would make it for Inter, provided they go on with it tonight. And what odds of them getting an A-League side in that round of 16. Of course, that opens up the possibility of Majors Bay Reserve hosting. If the Lions do manage to finish the job tonight and they do draw an A-League team, they will get hosting rights. There's a jacket doing his best to get out of a, a sticky situation. Cheeky little nutmeg on Ben Morrison as well. well. His best was very good, and look what it's set up for his side, if they can capitalise on this. There's McNabb. Is it for Carpathios, who looks long. Right down by Becerra. Tidied up by Hellenic. McNabb again. Spots the run of Da Costa. Gets to the byline. Can't wrap his foot around the cross. Net sails behind for a goal kick. Well, that's such a shame because that was a really good passage of play from Hellenic Athletic. They won the ball at the back with a jack at. Got himself out of trouble and his team out of trouble with some real trickery and a nutmeg. And then it was a sweeping move to the other side of the pitch and forward. And then again for Da Costa. Just his delivery let him down. one of the standouts in the first half. Fikret Barisha is able to get around one. Somehow finds Green, continues his run and a crunching tackle comes in. I think Barisha stayed down out of shock more than injury. Big tackle and it was needed. Big tackle on a big boy. He's got some power, hasn't he? As we see Barisha continue his run. Oliver Green kind of lost the ball in his feet in the turn. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I'm happy with the corner. There's that smoke again, Robbie, in the background. Where there's smoke, there's fire. Can intercapitalise on their 11th corner in 47, 48 minutes. Morrison, again, awkward to the back post. Nodded across the face, headed off the line. And Vrontos, with his second touch of the night, is able to hook it clear. Stilianos Vrontos, 20 years old, and also plays a bit of rugby union in the Northern Territory. Was the Eric Johnston medalist last year, which is the highest honour in Northern Territory rugby. 
playing for the University Pirates, so very talented sportsman, Stelianos Brontos. It's golden boot for the club, Division One last year for Hellenic, gold boot and MVP. Hopefully he can provide a little bit of attacking spark for the home side, but still a bit of work to do on the defensive end. All finds its way over the top of the defense. Half nodded clear. Everett comes in, hits it first time. The big barrel chest of Ajeke gets in the way. Well, based on what we saw in the first half from Everett, that half time, halfway strike that hit the crossbar, who would bet against him taking a strike from that distance? And it had some gunpowder packed behind it, Robbie. Morrison with the throw. Barisha lifting it into the back post, but no white jersey on the end of that. Goal kick, Hellenic. It's just the two qualifying matches for Hellenic Athletic. In the Australia Cup prelims, defeated University of Zuri. Three goals to nil as McCadden put under a bit of pressure and eventually wins the free kick. Dicing with death a little bit there. Another home side. It's Barisha. Well timed tackle to win possession back. Edge of the box. Everett lays it off. And Ollie Green. Just a little bit underneath that one. Always rising, wasn't it? Just didn't get his feet sorted out in time, Ollie Green. But again, that man Barisha saw it causing all sorts of problems down the right-hand side. He's powerful and direct running. Duke off the one-two. The save from McAdam. He's able to push it wide. Owen oh, Duke looking to add to his two-goal tally for the night. Patramanis. Morrison. Bit of interplay here between the Patramanis brothers. It's Billy and Evan. Certainly picking up where they left off here. Uh, Inter. Just happy to knock it around and just wait for the right time. And as soon as they spot that moment, they go. Well, that's one thing, of course, for Hellenic Athletic coach Dimi Galanopoulos to ask his players to go and press higher in the second half. Whether they've got the legs or not is another question. Because Inter are very comfortable in possession at the moment. And if Hellenic are to get at least a goal back and turn it into a contest they're going to have to press higher than what they are well, Hellenic certainly do have goal scoring form they are the top scoring side in the Premier League in the Northern Territory I think they're a good 15 or 16 goals clear of a second place team there's Barisha Tries to keep this in. Eventually rolls past for a goal kick. Mentioned at the start of the program, though, it's it's so hard to gauge the level of quality between the two competitions. But we are seeing clear as day on the scoreboard. Just at the moment, Inter Lions just have that extra bit of quality. It's always going to be tough for side from the territory. They can compete. We've seen it in the past. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, it just never comes to fruition on the night. It's nicely done by Everett. Looks to take on Carpathios. Turner's there to help out. McNabb, Maskey, missed touch works out well, and Da Costa continues his run forward. Keep up. 
Great crowd here at the Darwin Football Stadium. Demi Galanopoulos earlier in the week did put out the rallying call for the Darwin community as well as the football community getting behind them tonight trying to chase a little bit of history how good is it to the kids are out effectively on a school night watching a good level of football televised football it's just brilliant with the women's world cup at the moment and the hype that that's creating quality of our matildas of course the socceroos not that long ago at the world cup in qatar it really is a fantastic moment in time to be involved in our game here's da costa was encouraging the run forward of robert kilmartin since the Lions are uh, after their own little piece of history first time in the cup no side out of league one way out of NPL rather has made it past the round of 32 it's been eight or nine occasions we've had lower tier teams at this round none of them have made it past couple of close calls some extra time losses and last year Wollongong United in the sixth tier out of the Illawarra Premier League narrowly went down to Green Gully it's be a massive occasion if Inter Lions do get through here's Green one-on-one -on -one with Ajeke He's an immovable object, wasn't he? A jacket. He's always going to usher that ball out to safety for a goal kick for his side. But that sort of fight, that sort of muscle is something that Hellenic Athletic need in midfield. And up front, there's certainly been a lack of it tonight. Inter have bossed them around this pitch. The scoreboard suggests it. The statistics suggest it. Free kick for Hellenic. McNabb just had his heels clipped. There's a replay of the foul. Hand in the back. Clip on the heels. The big question, Robbie, are we going to see Daniel Georgeski tonight? Will he make a cameo off the bench? Or is he quite comfortable sitting where he's sitting? Free kick for Inter. Well, Georgievski does have a couple of cup goals in the qualifying. If you take a little look at that foul. <laughs> that was <laughs> cynical. Agricultural at best. Would not have looked out of place on a rugby field, that's for sure. Inter Lions, meantime, the cross. Knotted in, and Ollie Green has his second. A fifth goal for the Inter Lions tonight. And they can just about book their passage through to the round of 16. Frustration for Hellenic. But it's nothing short of what they deserve tonight, Inter. Absolutely no surprise whatsoever to see Duke as the provider and Oliver Green as the executioner. A very simple finish in the end. Great delivery from Duke. With no real pressure, if I'm honest. And of course, Ollie Green with a free run at the ball. There he is. Delighted to get his name on the score sheet for the second time tonight. I guess the question is now, can Inter go on with it in this second half? Here's that delivery from Duke. Look, he gets his head up, sp spots the run of Ollie Green. It's a very, very simple goal in the end. The run from Green splitting the two central defenders. Oh, and McAdam. 
Fancy footwork gets himself out of a bit of danger there. Well, it's two goals and two assists each for Owen Duke and Oliver Green. Here's Da Costa. Vrontos. Well, we're going to get themselves emphatically into the round of 16 in two of that. There's no doubt. Two of they are in the mood to really go on with it in the second half. Five nils already commanding. Well, if it's not the smell or the taste of the smoke drifting across Darwin, they've got the taste of goals tonight into Lions. There's Brontos trying to get on the edge of that. Nice tackle from Ben Morrison. Substitution about to take place. So double sub coming for the Inter Lions. Be Giuseppe Tilio or Joe Tilio, as he's also known. Coming on for Fikret Barisha, who's been outstanding tonight. Nolly Green won't get his hat trick, unfortunately, but it's been an outstanding performance. On the hour mark, he makes way. Thomas Quilligan, young forward, another like-for-like -like switch for Inter. Who are defending this throw-in. They do manage to clear their lines. Well, I was going to say, as Joe Tilio was lining up then to take his place on the pitch, you didn't even need to look at the team sheet to see who it was. Striking similarities with his brother, Marco, who we, of course, wish all the best in his big move to Celtic. So great to see him get his opportunity overseas at a big club. We missed in the A-League, of course. He's a player that gets fans into grounds and fans to the edge of their seats. Brilliant dribbler of the football. Joe, three years older than Marco, 24 years old, former Sydney FC youth player. Three goals in the qualifying campaign this year against Kissing Point, Norwest and Wollongong Olympic. Eager to see what he can do on the football pitch as well. Also, Thomas Quilligan, 20 years old, formerly of the Hakoa setup. Highly regarded futsal player as well. Six goals in League One this season. Also a couple in the preliminary rounds. There's Duke looking for number three himself. And McAdam, geez, he's looking very awkward here. He's well out of his area. That may have clipped his hand. Owen Duke, a jacket, clears off the line. Really dicing with death is the Hellenic goalkeeper there. But he managed to survive somehow. Well, that's remarkable from Duke. Look at this. Bringing out all the party tricks. And then goes for goal. And Ajeke was well positioned. He knew he had to cover his goalkeeper's tracks. A little bit of Erling Haaland in that hairdo from McAdam. Playing at the wrong end of the pitch. This might be a strange time to bring it up, but when McAdam was re signed by Hellenic, there was a social media post went up saying the safest hands in Darwin. Here come the lines again. Owen Duke, edge of the box. 
a jicket wins possession so he thinks alex king thinks otherwise and we have a penalty well at first glance i think alex king's spot on a good juke plays the ball through i don't think a jet gate needs to dive in there he just needs to get his body position right and he could could have defended that without committing i think it was quilligan who had made the run just turned his back at exactly the right time just as the tackle was coming in and the jacket he might have won a bit of the ball certainly was a foul and it will be quilligan to step up from the penalty spot he makes it six off the bench and with one of his first touches of the night Thomas Quilligan is on the score sheet. Into Lions 6, Hellenic Athletic nil. Well, it was Duke, the creator, who laid the pass into Quilligan's run, into the path of his run. He earned his side the penalty. He stepped up to take it, and he dispatches it as we see the replay of the creation of the penalty. And again, I don't think Ejeke can have any qualms whatsoever. And then Quilligan steps up with real confidence and sends... Kane McAdam the wrong way. This is now becoming an absolute rout. There have been three other 6-0 results involving teams from the Northern Territory. It's 2016 Darwin Rovers against the Brisbane Strikers. And then two in the last two years and then we're not done here. Into Lions as Duke looking for number seven. The follow-up saved by McAdam. Still on here for Quilligan. Left behind for Tilio, and that'll be a corner. But they are certainly in the mood tonight. Well, he's had a tough night, Kane McAdam, but that is a fantastic double save. He had to be very quick to save the first one, then get back on his feet, scramble across his goal mouth to affect the second save. Just to round out the, the other six nils from 2021, Casa Arena against Lions FC from Queensland. And then last year's cup, Mindel Aces against Avondale being the other six nil results. Shot coming in from the edge of the box. McAdam was interested. It sails just wide of the upright. What a strike that was. That was from real distance. As they give the ball straight back to Duke. And he replies in kind to Kane McAdam. Says, here you go. Maybe that was part of the mercy rule. Of course, the biggest ever loss in the Northern Territory in the Cup at this stage was 2017. Darwin Rovers went down to Sydney FC by eight goals to nil. And it's unfortunate to say, but we are looking in that territory now. We saw Western Sydney Wanderers put a score on last night. They didn't quite go on with it in the second half. We could be staring down the barrel of the biggest score here with still 25 minutes to, or so to go. Stefano Duck is still working hard for the home side. Shot coming in off the edge of the box. It's Lachlan Everett who's been busy this evening. Stefano Darkus again. McNabb. Still on here for the home side, but another wayward pass. Possession turned over softly. And the Lions can launch again. I think we all heard what the players thought of that one. You can see fatigue starting to set in now as Duke picks up the ball and tries to get out to Costa. Just commits the foul. 
Nothing malice in it, of course. So two more changes coming for the Inter Lions. Patrick Sibilio coming on as well as Daniel Georgievsky. So Australia Cup appearance number 16 for the former North Macedonia international, A-League champion as well. One of the most experienced players going around in the Cup tournament this year. And of course an all-round good guy, one of our colleagues here at Channel 10, the 10 Network. He did have a wonderful career in the A-League. Daniel Georgievsky. Here comes Morrison. One and one with Da Costa. Cuts back inside. Confirmation of that change. Straight swap at left back with Athana Seris. Building nicely on the edge of the box. A chance just wide for Joe Tellio. Would have dearly have loved to get himself on the score sheet. Well, you would have put your house on him scoring as well. Some great interchange here by Inter to find Tilio and he just didn't quite get his toe around it. Ended up hitting it too flat if you like. Shaving that far post. Twenty five shots to nil. Astounding. It's an incredible stat, isn't it? But full credit to Inter, they've come and had a real go at Hellenic tonight and got their just desserts. Maskey for Hel Hellenic finds McNabb. Nearly got his pocket picked by Georgievsky. But they have the foul. So good opportunity here for Hellenic as we take a look at the replay. He's tried to steal in from behind, did Georgievsky. Like a thief in the night. Free kick here for Hellenic. Low gets past the first line of defense. It's eventually half cleared by Patramanis, I think it was. McNabb goes down. No foul, says Alex King. And Duke comes away with it. Nice diagonal pass for Quilligan. Back heel for Georgievsky. Cross to the back post for Duke. And he managed to keep the shot in. Or keep the ball in play, rather. And that'll be a save for Kane McAdam. He just doesn't give things up, Duke, does he? He turns... What you think is the impossible into the possible. It was a sweeping move by Inter. Fantastic football to play out from the back. A little bit of trickery as well. And that's a great ball across the face. Duke was a little bit too wide, but made something of it. The corner was taken short. And the shot comes in, and McAdam got a left hand to that. May have just been creeping into that far post. Well, he had to be strong there because he went to ground far too early. McAdam, but he still affected the save. And that one's gone behind for a goal kick. And Hellenic are not wasting any time. Playing for pride now. 17 minutes plus change remaining. This round of 32 clash. All back for Anthony Costa, who's had very little to do in the second half. I think that may have been his first touch. Well, judging by the shot statistics we just saw, 
he certainly hasn't had to pull off a save although he did have to go down low from that first through ball early in the match that Simon Bell couldn't quite get his toe to that's about the most action mm -hmm. Anthony Costa has seen tonight first touch of the second half I meant to say certainly been able to keep the keeping kit clean tonight Anthony Costa as Vrontos working back and gives possession away Duke had Sibilio open looking for a return pass didn't come his way and Hellenic can break Sulov Maski on the edge of the box the lines recovered well in defense Quilligan lays it back switch of play here's Sibilio again Thompson for Morrison. Looking very comfortable are the Lions. And this one will eventually roll behind for a goal kick. Lions are making another change as the captain for the night. Sam Armson will be making way, as well as Silov Maski for the home side. Ronald Tlonen coming on in place of Maski. Martin just unable to link up with McNabb. Quilligan does well. Duke looking for his third is Nicholas Paris. First few touches for the number 10 from the Lions. confirmation of that change skipper Armisen making way for Paris Ronald Slonen number 15 for the home side slung in it right back Twenty years of age, former Darwin Olympic player, ten games this season in the Premier League. Ben Morrison. It's been tireless along this left wing. Harris. Nice turn for Duke. There's Morrison on the overlap and he'll find him to the byline. Low cross. Quilligan. Great save from McAdam. He hasn't had too many highlights, the Darwin keeper. But that was a great save. That's a first class save, that one. Brilliant instincts. Read the shot from Quilligan. Look at this. Great first touch. Quilligan knew exactly what he was trying to do. Probably didn't get the shot as wide as he would have liked into the corner of the net, the side netting. But gee, Kane McAdam stood tall there, didn't he? 
brilliant save. 16th corner of the night. Morrison and Tilio play it short. Mm, sharp turn from Morrison. And the shot at the near post goes wide. Well, who's the instigator of that first attack as well down the left hand side? Ben Morrison. Great delivery into the central area for Quilligan. That certainly would have been the icing on the cake. Vrontos looking to switch play. Finds its way to McNabb. Just can't get it under control. Evan Patramanis. Tomazos. Stefanodakis and Carpathios. Launched long, looking forward to Sloan to get on the end of it. And Vrontos, chest and volley. And that came off the defender, Billy Patramanis. So Hellenic get their first corner of the night. It's never too late to get your first corner of the night. Certainly not going to get them back into the contest with only 10 minutes of injury time to go. But good to see they're not going away, Hellenic. Athletic, they're still having a go. Making some mid-roads down this right-hand side. And there you go, 16 corners to one. Be delivered by George Carpathios to the near post. And there's no black shirts anywhere near that, unfortunately. Stefana Darkus lifts it back in. And Becerra has taken over the armband for Inter Lions. He's the one who got in the way there. Tomazos finds Carpathios again. Low cross. And eventually hooked clear by Morrison. A couple of changes coming for the home side. Cristiano da Costa. Rebin Shrestha, the number 11 coming on. As well as John Trachillis. Straight swap with Tiga Adjeke in the heart of defence. Well... I certainly wouldn't want to bump into him in a dark alley. He looks like an intimidating defender. Thirty-eight year old central defender John Trachillis. Played for Hellenic back in twenty eighteen in that game against the Wanderers. Paris, Quilligan, first time ball looking for the run of Tilio. he gets possession back, Paris time to measure the cross, goes to the near post and the header from Quilligan, sails just wide. He certainly knows where to be and when to be there doesn't he, Tom Quilligan, he's got a goal from the penalty spot to his name. He's created other opportunities for himself. Certainly out of this performance, whoever gets into Lions in the round of 16 will be lacking research at their own peril. This kill Martin. Quilligan working back. 
Wins possession. For Inter. Paris. Petromanis. And Sibilio. Just settling things down again for Inter. Oh, big contact in the middle of the park. It was Tomazos who comes away with the win there. Charging into the box goes McNabb. And the appeals for the penalty waved away. Come on, Alex King, give it. The crowd are baying for it. <laughs> the right decision in the end, no doubt. But the home crowd, they were desperate for the referee to point to the spot. Petromanis. It's the tempo. Really starting to slow down a little bit. Oof, McAdam. Just getting away with that one there. Looking to take on Tilio, and they're trying to play on the edge of their box here. And the shot from Paris. Somewhat of an open goal. He quite, can't quite make it pay. I think he's having a little bit of fun out there now, Kane McAdam. And as the fight's been lost, so he thought, I might just go on a mazy here. Well, I used to call them flying goalkeepers. Nothing to lose, I suppose. It certainly hasn't been a boring night here in the top end, that's for sure. No, absolutely not. Two NPL clubs, as we said at the start, nothing to lose, everything to gain. Inter have certainly taken the initiative tonight and just had too much quality for the home side if I'm honest lovely ball over the top McNabb in a little bit of space he hasn't seen this kind of freedom at all this match gets a shot on target and the save from Anthony Costa I think he just introduced himself to the ball then Anthony Costa while he was laying on the ground 31 shots to three 17 of them on target. Remarkable. Well, the save for Costa, you know, certainly be adding to the team's laundry list tonight. We'll be trying to claim a bit of dirt. Tilio. Well, we've had a Tilio, a Barisha, a Duke. Incredible, isn't it? It's, it's remarkable names. how similar the Tilio brothers move on the football field. Here's the shot that forced to save out of Anthony Costa. Down to his right. Clean sheet at all costs, no doubt, from Costa. Another pun that you'll have to pardon. I think that's 2 0 to you, Mossy. Match day three. Just about coming to an end. The round of 32. Morton Bay, United, and Heidelberg kicked off a little bit earlier this evening. as well as the Melbourne Knights and Queensland Lions, or Lions FC, approaching full time in that one, as we are here in Darwin. And of course, final match day of the round of 32 on Monday night. Catch all the action on 10 play. Of course, the draw for the round of 16 taking place after all matches have been completed.
So be sure to tune in for that. We might see Inter Lions taking on the might of an A-League side. Wouldn't that be fantastic? And that is right there, the beauty of the cup. You never know who you're going to draw, but huge game on Sunday, isn't it? Down in Wollongong, Wynn Stadium. Sydney FC hosting Central Coast Mariners. Great to see the champions in action. From the corner, nodded down and over the crossbar. Alex Becerra. Looking to add a seventh for the Lions. Final minute of normal time. Comprehensive and certainly comfortable display from the Lions. You get your three points tonight, Robbie. The Mike Cockrell medal points. The late, the great Mike Cockrell will be smiling down, absolutely no doubt, with how well this competition is now going. Loved the cup, didn't he? Well, no added time needed. Alex King brings this one to a close. We will get to the Cockrell medal points or nominations shortly but what a superb display from the league one side from new south wales into lions fc two goals to owen duke two goals to ollie green sam armson and tom quilligan getting on the score sheet as well full time at the darwin football stadium it is the inter lions who will advance to the round of 16 six nil winners over hellenic athletic And there's certainly plenty of highlights to go through tonight, Mossy. And it all started inside six minutes. Owen Duke grabbing his first. Yeah, and some fantastic interplay between Oliver Green and Owen Duke. And that wasn't just on that occasion. That was a recurring theme tonight. But Owen Duke, real awareness of how to use the pace of that ball just to loft it over the oncoming Kane McAdam to get his team off to the start. And here we go again, Ollie Green. Look at this for awareness. Commits a defender, waits for the overlapping run from that man, Duke, again. And he slotted that with some class. Look at that. Opens his body up and gets some real power behind the ball from the instep of the foot. Brilliant technique. Ollie Green got himself on the score sheet. A vital touch. An assist for Owen Duke to go along with his two goals. The first of his two assists. Certainly one that Ollie Green deserved. And then just on half time, the captain got himself in on the scoring act. 4 0 it was at the break, Sam Armson. Well, it's incredible, isn't it? The contrasting halves for Kane McAdam in the Hellenic Athletic goal. It was a torrid first half for him, but the second half he pulled off some great saves. There's that finish from Armson. Johnny on the spot, the captain. You can see McAdam just couldn't hold that. It was bobbly in that goal mouth for him. There's no doubt about that, but should have done better on that occasion. But overall, into Lions just way too strong. And this is the penalty from Quilligan, who came on and had a real impact, Robbie, I have to say. Again, look at Duke down this left-hand side, gets his head up, finds his strike partner in Oliver Green for his second of the night. A dominant display in just about every sense of the word. Possession, shots, shots on target as well. I think we're about 16 or 17 to go with the shots there. 139 passes in the final third, 17 corners to one. Touches in opposition box, 56 to two. I think that tells a story as well. So fantastic display. The first time a team from New South Wales outside of the NPL has progressed to the round of 16. Unfortunately, the drought continues for teams from the Northern Territory. Three straight years now, there's been a 6-0 result here in Darwin. 
for the Mike Cockrell medal, certainly you can't go past the likes of Owen Duke, Ollie Green. I think with the two standouts for me, Mossy, what about I think you? Owen, Owen Duke gets my vote tonight just because the impact he had on the game when it was still in the balance. I thought he was uh, outstanding in that first half. So still more action to come on Sunday. Match day four, Sydney FC taking on the Central Coast Mariners from Wind Stadium in Wollongong. An all A-League clash as well as the Oakley Cannons taking on Melbourne City at the Jack Edwards Reserve. And then that final match day for the round of 32 on Monday night. Campbelltown City up against Mark MacArthur. Newcastle Jets face Brisbane Raw and Northcote City against Adelaide United. And the round of 16 draw will take place straight after all of those games have taken place. So tune in for that only on 10 play. And on behalf of all the crew here for Network 10, Phil Moss, an absolute pleasure as always. Thank you for your company. Pleasure to be here, Robbie. Love the Australia Cup. What a competition. Hope you enjoyed your evening. Congratulations to Interlions FC. They make it through to the round of 16. Good night from Darwin.